it's Jo from Minerva. Today we are going to do a sew along for a bag and the bag we're going to make is the Compass Bag by Noodlehead. Noodlehead do um, very sophisticated bag patterns. Um, they've got all the gubbins that you would want, inside pockets, slip pockets, zips, different closures. So you do learn quite a lot by choosing a Noodlehead bag. The fabrics that I've chosen for this pattern are an art gallery canvas. There are lots of different art gallery canvases, so you could switch this in and out for your preference. An accent fabric for the straps and the pockets, that's a black canvas. This comes in 13 different colours, so depending on which pattern fabric you choose for your bag, you can coordinate with your plain canvas. A bag lining, so this is going to have an ochre colour lining. This is in canvas too because it will give your bag a little bit of stability. Some stiff interfacing for stiffening your bag, the base and uh, the outer exterior. A product you might not have used, which is a fusible fleece. So this is a kind of wadding that you put in bags, but it's... Um, Got a gluey side so you can stick it down to keep it stable while you're sewing. There's quite a lot of hardware involved in this pattern as well as D-rings, clips, little bits and pieces but I'll show you those as I go along. You will definitely need a jeans needle um, that's a number 90 or 100 for going through very thick layers of fabric and you will need some black cotton obviously or whichever matches your fabric and I'll show you any other tools that I use along the way that make uh, sewing a little bit easier. All the products that I use are listed below along with the tools. So if you hover over them, um, it will say add to basket and you can add the whole uh, product list to your basket and then edit as necessary. Or you can use the quantities that are shown to go and choose your own fabrics to make the compass bag. As with all bags, especially noodle head ones that have got a lot of details, the cutting out uh, requires you to put aside quite a bit of time to make sure that you've got all of the separate pieces. We're going to go over to the cutting table and make sure that we get all of the parts and components that we need. The cutting out is uh, quite a long list and you will need to follow the cutting instructions. The compass bag has some pattern pieces, pocket flaps um, and the base. I did make some little pattern pieces. The D-ring holder and the strap tab because um, those were given as measurements. So if I want to make this bag again, I've now got pattern pieces that I can use. So there is uh, the strap tabs and the D-ring holder, so they're all part of the handle. There is a handbag strap. I'm going to make the adjustable one. So those are all the strap components. There are internal pockets. So there's a slip pocket. There's a zip pocket. There are some external pockets. So I've got um, black pockets to go on the outside of my bag. And there are cargo pocket flaps that go over the top. There is a pocket for um, having a pleat in the middle, but because I'm making the small bag, it just has the slip pocket on it. So there's all of the pocket components, all of the strap components, and then there are the main bag pieces. So there is a bag lining base, an outer base, the lining base has interfacing on the back and the exterior base has fleece on the back and they're all listed on each pattern piece so you know how many to cut out of each part. And there is the main shape of the bag. So there is the exterior piece which is in this art gallery black and white canvas. This has fleece on the back and there is the lining pieces and they have interfacing on the back. You need to be sure that when you cut out the main bag piece that you cut one out 
a, a pair out right this way and then a pair out right that way so that you get that nice shape on the top of your bag. So there's a lot of cutting out with all bags really because there's all different components and then it's key to sew them all together in the right order. As with all my sew alongs, I am going to follow the instructions as they are listed on the pattern. I'm not going to change the order of it or anything, so that if you're following the pattern, you can go through the different stages. Number one is to assemble the shoulder strap. So you're going to fuse interfacing into the centre portion of your strap, and then you're going to fold the sides into the middle. I like to leave a little gap so that I don't get um, a bulk on this crease. Fold it in half and that's going to make your strap so it's four layers of fabric wide. It's the, the amount that we're turning in against the strap and then doubled over. It's quite tricky to get a pin in there. So I have been using um, some clover clips because I can hold together quite bulky pieces of fabric without bending my pins. You're going to top stitch along both edges of the strap. Step D is to add our first bit of hardware which is a buckle slider and this is so that your strap is adjustable. Um, you can make a fixed shoulder strap from this pattern but I'm going to show you how to use these sliders. So you'll only need one, so you've got one for another bag. And on step D, you're going to slip the bag strap through the slider. And then fold over the end and secure that in place. Step E is to add the swivel clips. You put a swivel bar onto the other end of your strap. So we've got one end with the slider, one end with nothing. Just thread it on. And then with the join facing the table, you're going to put the shoulder strap through the slider like this. And then you can adjust it. You've got to make sure it's not twisted. So then you'll have a slider is adjustable and the swivel clip on the other end and then on the other end you put the second swivel clip and you're going to use the same as you did on the back of the swivel clip you're going to flip the end over And sew across the end. Again, I've got the selvage, so I'm just going to trim those hairy bits off. I'm going to leave the selvage. I'm going to leave the selvage line because that's stopping it from fraying. This is um, stage F. So you've got your D-ring holder, which is a little piece of fabric. You might imagine it to be cut like that, but actually you need to fold it with the short ends the same as you did for the strap. And then you're going to sew down each side. Our next bit of hardware are D-rings. You get four of these, but you will need two. So you've got a slider for another bag and two D-rings for another bag. And the D-ring goes through the tab and then you can fold the tab in half and that's the shape that you're looking for and then you can just machine tack along the end of there so it doesn't keep popping open you need to make two of those 
step J is to make the strap tab. So you will have um, another little square. You're going to put a piece of interfacing on it and then you're going to sew from the ends backwards and forwards into the middle and then you're going to leave a one and a half inch gap I've drawn a line so that I've got the right seam allowance and then you're going to turn it through this gap that you've left once it's turned right sides together I'm then going to uh, press it down and now I'm going to sew along each end and then I can turn it out through that little one and a half inch gap that I left. The ends are sewn. I'm going to clip off the corners because I want this to be a nice clean square when I turn it through. And then I'm going to make sure that the corners are nice and square when I turn it through. Okay, those are all the components of step one. So that's the D-ring tabs, the little strap tab and the completion of the main shoulder strap. And now we're going to move on to the pockets that are on the outside. There are two different types of pockets depending on if you make view A or view B because the one bag's a little bit bigger than the other one. So the slip pocket on the outside is a little bit bigger. So make sure you cut the right pocket for the right size bag that you're making. 2A is to put two pocket pieces together. So you put um, a pocket lining and a slip pocket right sides together, sew around, turn it out, and then it's very tricky to show you on black, but then you need to top stitch along the edge. So that is the slip pocket that goes on the outside of the bag. Here. They've both got cargo flap tops but you could just have the slip pocket on its own if that's your more your style and you need to make two of these step three in the instructions is to make the pocket flat so that's the um, tops of the cargo pockets and that comes in three little parts you need to put the right sides of the pocket flaps together so I've got an outer pocket that I had in um, pattern fabric and a lining in canvas. You're going to sew the seam allowance around the curve, clip out the curves and then turn the pocket through to the right side. And then you can start to work, I always use a seam gauge, you can start to work some of that fabric around that corner nicely because this is going to be on the outside and it's quite a feature of your uh, bag and then you're going to press that make sure you curl or roll the lining slightly to the back so that you don't have any of the lining showing and then you're going to top stitch around the edge of that cargo pocket flap and that's ready now to go onto the bag and that's step three. Step four is to assemble the exterior of the bag. So this will have the fusible fleece on and you're going to join the um, pieces together. Now I did do this in the wrong order so you can see where I've got a little bit of unpicking and Bag making is all about getting it in the right order because I joined the centre front seams first. I was really keen because I'd done some pattern matching so I wanted to check that my pattern matched up. But actually you need to join the side seams first so that you can construct the slip pocket over the top of that. So you don't join the centre front seam first, you join the side seam first and then you need to top stitch either side of your seam. You'll know it's the side seam because it's the side that's raised up in the middle. So when you look at the top line, this is lower. This is the centre seam where you'll put your hand into your bag. 
and this is the side seam where you'll have the strap and the pocket. Next you're going to put those pockets on so you're going to find the centre line of your pocket, match it up with the centre seam, pin if you can pin, clip if you need to clip if your fabric's clipped. And we're going to top stitch the pocket in place. Okay, we're going to put the flap on now. So one inch from the top of the pocket, I'm just going to use a seam gauge. I'm going to put the pocket flap. I'm going to mark that there. I'm going to center the pocket flap <clears throat> and I'm going to use a 1 8 seam allowance it's a really small one I have zigzagged the edge of that to stop it fraying when I was working with it so I'm going to use the line edge of the zigzag as my guide and then that pocket's going to flap down then we're going to top stitch it so all of that raw edge will be enclosed anyway And then repeat for the other side. Step N is to complete your exterior pocket, which is part of step four. So you're going to put your tab with your ring on it on this centre fold. And then you're going to use your square to go over the top, the little tab that you made to go over the top. So you follow the instructions, it is uh, two inches down from the top, so you mark two inches from the top to the bottom of your tab ring, so your tab ring is going to go about there. You baste it on and then you can put your tab square over the top and then you can sew all the way around and then put a cross through the middle. Okay, to help the bag go around the corners, you will see where I got to the end of sewing my base and I went forwards and back. And now I'm going to snip into the fleece and the exterior. Don't go through the stitching here and don't cut the base underneath. And that will help you to turn the corner. So you see the next one here, look. This is where I went forwards and back. And then there is where I'm going to cut, making sure that I don't cut the base below or into the stitch line. I'm going to do that on every corner. And that will help us to manipulate corner and the base will go around like this so you'll get much more of a corner shape because your uh, fabric here can splay open a little bit. That is the end of the exterior bag so you've got that square in the bottom with some nice corners And it stands up on its own. It's really, really strong because it's got those slip pockets on the side that are giving it a little bit of strength. Step six, you will put together the bag lining with one side left open. And we will have a back that's been marked on the pattern. And then we're going to work on the zip pocket piece and you'll need um, a marker pen, a fine one. A chalk will be too chunky for you to get a really nice opening for your zip. So um, this is an air erasable pen that's got a fine line on the end. Let me show you how to mark that. 
we're going to do a horizontal line one inch from the top down draw a line then you're going to mark three eighths of an inch down and draw a line so you've got a little zip opening in the middle and then from this edge here you're going to go in five eighths and this edge here in five eighths so you should have a little letterbox shape to insert your zip the next critical measurement is to have your lining right side up and your zip pocket with the markings side facing you and you're going to find the halfway point and line it up with this back seam and that's where the lining dips remember the humps are the sides and this is the back of your bag it does say that in the pattern and you're going to pin on your pocket and it needs to be three inches from the top of your bag now you're going to use that rectangle envelope letterbox shape that you drew and you're going to sew with quite a small stitch length near a two and you're going to sew all the way round that letterbox shape Pivot on the corners and be as accurate as you can. This is where you need a really sharp pair of scissors. Um, these have got very sharp points because you're going to cut along this rectangle and then clip into the corners without cutting the stitching then when we've made the opening then we can flip the pocket through that opening that we make And then we can flip this pocket through the gap. And you'll know if you've gone close enough to the corners because it will go through on the edges. You might need to go back and just um, clip a little bit more if you're getting, mine's not done quite enough, if you're getting little puckers like that, you're not quite in the corner. I have a confession to make my lining has changed color because i spilled a whole cup of coffee on my mustard colored one so i've cut another one out of black so the rest of the lining you will see in the black canvas so with the black lining i have my zip pocket behind and i've clipped the corners so that i've not got any puckering here that's making this flip up and then I am able to put a zip behind here. So the zip goes underneath. It's more tricky to see now. Like this. It's the, uh, the letterbox opening is exactly the right size for the zip, which is listed below. So you'll be able to see the size. And then I'm going to top stitch very carefully and very neatly around the zip. Now have a zip into the pocket, but the pocket is going to be folded up to make the inside facing. So step six L is to finish the pocket from the reverse so this is the wrong side of your lining you're going to lift your um, pocket lining so that it meets the top so you've got your zip underneath like this and you're going to pin that lining in place ready to sew step M working from 
so you thin to the pocket up working from the right side of the fabric showing you're now going to sew the edges of your pockets but not catch the lining or any other part of the pocket and then you can do the same from the other side and sew down the side of the pocket lining step P as part of the internal pocket arrangements are to sew the two slip pocket pieces together a lining and an outer you're going to leave a gap to turn it out so all the way around click the corners turn it the right side out and then that is going to sit below your zippered pocket last stage of the slip pocket is to pin the pocket lining up out of the way so that you can put your slip pocket on top top stitch and then you can release this lining and it will go down but you won't have caught it in this stitching complete the lining now so we're going to sew down that remaining seam on the lining and it's that time to do that tricky top stitch where we need to uh, roll the um, tube shape under the machine so that we can then um, top stitch each side it's time to repeat the bag base so we're going to match the notches clip the corners and we're going to leave a space here to turn the bag so we're going to leave some of this bag open so that we can turn it out when we assemble the outer and inner lining our last bit of hardware are the magnet snaps for making the closure on the top of the bag we're going to measure 1.5 inches from the top of the bag lining down to here with the wrong side showing and you're going to mark where the prongs will go through on the magnet snap tricky on black and then we can use a stitch ripper to make two little prong marks that go through the lining so you can apply the magnet snaps and then they can meet each other there you can also put a little bit of fabric over the top of that to stop it rubbing a mark onto your outer fabric as well that makes it last a little bit longer and now it's time to assemble the bag Step eight is to assemble your bag and you're going to put your exterior inside your interior, your lining, with the right sides together. You need to make sure that all this metal hardware is all pointing down out of the way because we're going to sew around here with the sewing machine and we don't want to catch any of this. And so all of that is going to be pressed down out of the way and then we're going to match up our top stitch seams in the centre really close to finishing we're on the back page we've turned the bag the right side out and now it's time to top stitch around the top of the bag and it's worth taking a little bit of time with that because that's going to be the finished edge that you see be careful at the ends here where you've got the d-ring make sure you pull that right out of the way so that you can get behind it with your foot Today's sew along was the compass bag by Noodlehead. I made the small bag. Um, there is a larger one as well for putting a bit more gear in, sewing things, and um, going to the beach. This one's more a large handbag style. All Noodlehead patterns are worth a look. They've got superb instructions. There was a whole booklet to work through today, giving good diagrams and good. Uh, seam allowances and measurement instructions.
could make a really accurate bag using a noodle head pattern. So there we are, there's the bag finished. Um, it's got a pattern match on the front. You've got the slip pockets on the side and those really add strength. So when you put the bag down, it doesn't collapse. It stays up really nice and firm all the way around to the back. Inside, obviously I've got a bit of a strange thing on the inside. I've got um, a yellow slip pocket and a yellow base. The reason I chose a yellow lining is because it's easy to find your things in the bottom of your bag if you've got a lighter coloured lining. So the black lining is not ideal, I don't think, because you can't see everything in there, but it, uh, it helped me to complete the bag, which is good. All the products that I've used are listed below. Um, the quantities are there too, but you want, might want to switch in and out the colour combinations to match your outer um, pattern fabric. So you can choose a different colour for the inside and your accent colours. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you've got any questions, please list those below. Bag making does have some specific skills and um, some people really love it. And some people like to make garments, but I think sometimes it's a really good chance to steer away from fitting and really consider 3D construction.